There's so much tension in the world right now and with COVID resurfacing again, many people are struggling with their mental and emotional health. COVID, politics, racial tension, past mistakes, and just everyday life. We are constantly dealing with stress, anxiety, fear, and anger. No wonder so many of us suffer from mental and emotional health issues, but there is hope. You can find peace, emotional health, healing from toxic emotions, and freedom from the bondage of your past. Take a journey toward healing in my new book, 21 Day Inner Healing Journey. As you read this book, my hope is that you'll begin to see God in a new way that will transform your life and relationships. You'll set out on a 21-day journey taking a deeper look at many different areas of your life as I share what I've learned from my own healing journey. You will find complete healing. You will change, and a different person will emerge, the person God made you to be. This is an all-new book in the 21-Day Inner Healing Journey Collection. I took the online course teaching, application exercises, prayers, and journaling questions and combined them into this one new book. This is a powerful resource to always have at your fingertips and to read again and again. Visit 21dayinnerhealing.com to order your copy today. And as a podcast listener, for a limited time, we're giving you $5 off. Just use the coupon code INNERHEALINGMT at checkout. Start healing today. Welcome to the Marriage Today podcast. I'm Karen Evans, and this is my husband, Jimmy. And today we're talking about money. We're talking about, uh, we're doing a series of podcasts. It's actually the last in the series of God and Money, Mm -hmm. helping you to understand the issue of money. And this is a big deal in marriages. Uh, Many people divorce or have really serious problems over the issue of money. Mm -hmm. Money's a big deal. It's something that we do every day. So let me read you a question here. We have a couple of questions from viewers. And by the way, if you uh, want to submit a question, uh, we begin these podcasts by answering questions from our viewers. MarriageTodayPodcast.com. Submit your question. We would love to answer it here mm-hmm. during the podcast. This is for you, Karen. Money is a hot topic for us. We never seem to be on the same page. And talking about it turns into a fight. What do we do? <laughs> well, we went through this many, many years of this. And actually, it wasn't until we did a vision retreat yeah. that we got set free from yeah. just the entanglement. You know, your personality is is more dominant as far as um, how you see things. And I'm more, uh, you know, a follower, mm-hmm. I should say. But we both came into the marriage. It wasn't about our personalities. It was about how we viewed money. Yeah. And I thought security is having savings. And you thought spending was having fun. And so, you know, we had this conflict of you know, constantly seeing it differently. And so when we finally took that vision retreat and we began to ask the Lord, what, is, what does God say about our finances? Yeah. And we put God in the middle of it. And we, we prayed that week and that, those two days in the cabin. And, you know, we just asked the Lord, you know, how do you want us to handle money? Yeah. And it was miraculous because we yeah. came out of that agreeing on everything. It was like we saw the vision for how our finances should look. You know, whether it was, you know, spending on education, clothes, the kids, you know, uh, all the things that, you know, were important as far as having a family. And so I would definitely say a vision retreat is a huge deal. A huge deal. uh, Just learning, learning to see money the same. Now, the book Four Laws of Love, there are two chapters in here very helpful for anyone who can relate to this. One of the chapters is called Married on Purpose. It's about having a vision retreat. Mm -hmm. We also have a vision retreat guidebook that we just came out with that helps you to prepare for a vision retreat, go on a vision retreat, and follow up after your vision retreat. There's another chapter in the book called on uh, financial intimacy and partnership. So if you have a hard time, and this is all that the Lord has taught us Mm -hmm. about vision retreat and about money, if you have a hard time dealing with this as a couple, you have to get help. Don't just sit there and fight about it and don't give up. Get help. We used to fight about it. Now we get along great because we learned some things along the way. And that, that's why I wrote the book, Four Laws of Love, and why we developed the resource on Vision Retreat. Mm-hmm. you have a question for me? I do. Uh, growing up, my parents didn't have a lot of money, so I don't want to spend more than we have to. My wife says I'm too frugal and should be willing to put money toward having fun with our family. How do I get past the fear that I won't be able to provide enough to do that? Well, I grew up poor, mm-hmm. uh, not in poverty, but we grew up poor. Mm-hmm. And um, now my personality is that I want to have fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, I want to use money to bless our family and have fun. Um, your, 
your wife's not right, you're not right. You're both right. And you need to have security, you need to have savings. Mm -hmm. And this is what you would say to me, Karen, when you felt like I was spending too much money, you would say, I want to do that too. I just want to have money and savings before we do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's, I think that the husband here, the wife in this situation uh, is saying some good things to you. Mm -hmm. you. You need to invest in your family having fun. You know, if all you have is money and no fun, I mean, what, hey, you'd ra I'd rather have fun and less money mm -hmm. personally. And so, but you want to have both uh, and you can have both, but, but the, there's the winner here should be God, not the man or the mm -hmm. woman. The winner here should be both of you submitting, both of you agreeing and praying about it, and then having faith as you and your wife agree on this that God will provide. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I think bo they both have. Well, good I think you have to take money out of the issue as far as putting it. Like money is the answer to whatever we need in a family. Right. You know, it's like you know that shouldn't it shouldn't be something that's controlling you. Right. You know, it should be something that is in a perspective of good stewardship. You know, right. God has given us this. And let's look, look at a way that we can bless each other, bless our family, but yet be um, a servants of it and saving. I yeah. mean, you can do it all. You can, absolutely, you can do it all. I, I know people that are very wealthy, and they are terrified of spending money, and they're the most boring people in the world. <laughs> uh, they, it doesn't matter how much you have. Mm -hmm. it, it's your value system. Yeah. And so we hope that this helps. We're going into this teaching now on God and money. We hope this is a blessing to you. <laughs> I want to talk about the fullness of the blessing that Jesus died for. If we put faith in this now, this is, this is the essence of the gospel and what we put faith in. Romans 5, 1, therefore, having been justified by faith, we, just as if we never sinned, if we put faith in it now, we have to believe that. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this word peace is a very important word, Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is a messianic prophecy. That means this is talking about Jesus in the Old Testament, and this is telling us about his death and why he's gonna die, Isaiah 53. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs. That means sicknesses. He bore our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace. That's an important word. It's the word shalom. The chastisement for our shalom was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So this is telling us here that Jesus took our sins, he took our sicknesses, on the cross, he was rejected by God and by men for our peace, the chastisement for our peace, the shalom. So when a Jewish person greets you and they would say, coming or going, they would say shalom. The word shalom means the total blessing of God. It does, the word peace in the Hebrew does not mean an absence of conflict. The word peace in Hebrew means the complete total blessing of God. Jesus didn't die on the cross so you could kind of be blessed. He didn't die on the cross so you could mostly be blessed. He died on the cross so you could be 100% shalom blessed. And this is what the Bible says. We have peace with God. Peace with God, it doesn't mean we don't have conflict with God. We have peace with God, which means the absolute, full, total blessing of God is on our lives if we put faith in him. It's not about us, like Abraham. It's not, it's not about us. It's not about how good we are. It's not about us that we don't deserve it. But thank God that we have a God who gives us everything that we don't deserve through faith, through faith. If we believe that our God is a good God and he has done that, we can receive every blessing that God wants for us. This is Galatians 3. This is one of the most important passages in the Bible right here. Galatians 3. Christ has redeemed us. Redeem means buy back. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. The cross was a tree. That the blessing of Abraham, here it is, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that means non-Jews, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Jesus became a curse for us. He took the curse away, he became a curse, 
so that the blessing of Abraham can come on the non-Jews. Well, in the, in the book of Genesis, God comes to Abraham and he blesses him and he says, I'm gonna bless you and all the generations that come after you. But it was a genetic blessing. And you can see the blessing of God on the Jews. I mean, they're, they're just a blessed people. A, a tiny percent of the population, they get more Nobel Prizes than almost anybody else. They, they control the arts, they control the financial sectors. Uh, they're extremely brilliant in the sciences and that's the blessing of God on them. So God, through Jesus, what this is saying is, there was a genetic blessing on the Jews in the Old Testament, beginning with Abraham. And now Jesus came and took the curse away but he did, Jesus did not die on the cross just so we could be forgiven of our sins. Jesus did not die on the cross so the curse could be taken away. Jesus died on the cross so we could be forgiven of our sins, that the curse of sin could be removed, and the blessing of Abraham could come back on the non-Jews. The genetic blessing the genetic blessing that was on the Jewish people and still is on the Jewish people that was reserved for a genetic race, now it's a spiritual blessing that's available through Jesus Christ. You say, well, what is the blessing of Abraham? I'm glad you asked. I'm prepared to answer. Genesis 24, one. Now the Lord, uh, it says, Abraham was old, well advanced in age. Listen, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. You know something? You know what you, know what you want for your children when, when your children are born? Here's what you want for your children. You want that verse right there. I want my children to grow very old and to be blessed in everything, right? Isn't that what you want? Isn't that what, what you want for yourself? Did you know that Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you could be forgiven of all your sins, so that the curse of sin could be removed and you could live in the blessing of Abraham? And I want to say something to you. And I've said this to you before, I want to say it again. So I go to the doctor, you know, I have a good doctor. And the doctor that I used to have was the doctor for me and my dad and my brothers and all my whole family. And I would go to the doctor uh, and he would say, um, well, Jimmy, you know, your family's disposition toward this and this and this and this, whatever. And, you know, and it was nice, nice guy, but he was a good doctor. But I'm basically just saying, you're probably going to get this. You're probably going to get this. And it's probably how you're going to die and have a good day. That kind of stuff, you know. And he was a good doctor, you know, I didn't, I didn't get mad at him when he said it, but here's what I did. I went and got in my car. Every time he said something like that to me, I went out and I got in my car, and here's what I said. I am no longer of the polluted bloodline of the Evanses. It's been, the Evans bloodline has been polluted by sin. And because of that, we've got all kinds of problems within our family, genetically and otherwise. I am now of the bloodline of Abraham. And it... If it happened to Abraham, I'll accept it. If it didn't happen to him, I won't accept it. So when someone says to me or any of my family, well, you know, you're predisposed to this, I'm predisposed toward blessing because I am of the bloodline of Jesus Christ. The predisposition toward genetic problems is out the window. I've got a new bloodline. Think about that. Think, of, think about what the Bible says that we have shalom, peace, and the blessing of Abraham is available by faith, by faith. So if, if you wanna believe that you have a polluted bloodline and you've got all these problems coming your way, you can believe that. But I'm saying right now, if you would put faith in the power of God, you don't have to endure all the curses of your family bloodline because you're totally 100% blessed. All of us need help from time to time. Karen and I have been to counseling at various times in our lives and we highly recommend it. If you're looking for individual one-on-one -on -one mental health counseling, please check out Faithful Counseling. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it is professional individual counseling done securely online from the privacy of your own home. That's right, it's professional Christian online counseling you can do from your home. Faithful Counseling will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist for a weekly video or phone session. It's more affordable than traditional office counseling and financial aid is available. Plus, they're offering a special discount of 10% off your first month for our podcast listeners. To learn more and for 10% off, go to this website, getfaithful.com forward slash marriage today. When Jesus died for us on the cross, there were seven things that happened on the cross, specific things. 
Jesus took the bad and gave us the good. Let me go through these real quick. Number one is Jesus took death. He died. Uh, the wages of sin is death. So Jesus died. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's the word zoe in the Greek, and it means superabundant life. He was rejected. Uh, Isaiah 53, 3, he was despised and rejected by men. When Jesus hung on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Not only was he rejected by his own people and put on the cross, when he was hanging on the cross about three in the afternoon, the sky grew black and God the Father turned his back on Jesus. And it's the only time that Jesus called his father God and in personal reference to his father. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here's the answer. God forsook Jesus because he'll never forsake you. God the Father rejected Jesus. He'll never reject us. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus took the rejection that we were, that we were due so that we could be accepted by God even though we don't deserve it. It's a wonderful thing. A sickness, Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he has borne our sicknesses. And by his stripes, it says, we are healed. Okay, so Jesus took sickness so that we could have healing. And, so, you know, and the thing is, you, know, you get the flu or you get a cold or whatever, but I'm saying this, don't accept sickness. If, if you have an illness, especially a chronic illness, fight for what Jesus gave you. You know, and don't be, you don't have to be legalistic about it, but I'm saying fight for everything that God has given you by faith. Believe that, that Jesus took your sicknesses. Number four, bondage. He was oppressed and afflicted, led as a lamb to slaughter. That's Isaiah 53, seven. Jesus was bound during the time that they tried and crucified him. But Jesus said, if the son makes you free, you should be free indeed. Satan has, listen, listen. Satan has no legal claim on you. Not on your mind not on your body, not on your emotions, not on your marriage or your family or your finances. Satan has no legal right to you. And you can bind him and cast him away because you have been set free by God. Number five, Jesus took the condemnation. Isaiah 53, six. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus took every single sin that any human being would ever commit, and he was condemned for it. God condemned Jesus. But Romans 8 says there's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. We, we are forgiven by Jesus. He took the condemnation away. Number six, punishment, the punishment that we deserve. He was smitten by God and afflicted. And it says the chastisement for our peace was upon him. Romans 5, 1, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the point. In the Old Testament, every time an offering was offered up in the Old Testament, the offering only temporarily satisfied God's anger. It, it, didn't, it didn't completely vent God's anger. And so they offered up offerings after offerings after offerings, and they had to. Because every offering they offered up just temporarily uh, delayed God's anger that much longer. When Jesus hung on the cross, 100% of the wrath of God about sin was vented on Jesus. And when Jesus hung on the cross, he said these words, it is finished. And what that means is this, he's not mad anymore. He was mad. He was angry about sin. But on Jesus, he vented the full anger of his wrath on Jesus and Jesus took the full price. So we're gonna go to heaven, we'll never experience punishment. Not the punishment that we should, should have. Hell and all those kinds of things. And here's the last one. Poverty for prosperity. Jesus died poor. Uh, it says, uh, Isaiah 53, he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich in his death. Jesus died between two thieves, but he was resurrected in a rich man's grave. And there's something symbolic about that. That Jesus took poverty away so we could have prosperity. And the definition of prosperity is having more than enough to do God's will for your life. That's, that's, that's in Third John 2, John says, may you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. God, God wants prosperity for us. So let me, let me just talk for just a minute about how to experience financial blessing, uh, financial fullness in your life. And the first is you have to believe that poverty is a curse. Poverty, who, who, who on earth would want their children to live in poverty. My father 
And I've told you the story before. My father grew up in abject poverty. My father slept outside every day of his life growing up. He never slept indoors. In the wintertime, he slept with the horses. They could only eat meat once a week. My dad was uh, born in 1929 at the beginning of the, the Great Depression. And my father was scarred by that. Every day of, of my life, I saw the effects of poverty, the, the scars of poverty on my father. If you believe that poverty is blessed, you don't understand poverty. It's a curse from hell. Prosperity is a blessing. And what God wants for you, what God wants for you is for you to have more than enough to do what he's called you to do in your life. That's the definition of prosperity. And for one person, it might be $50,000 a year. For another person, it might be $250,000 a year. You, you can't put a number on it because we're all so individual. And this is Matthew 7. Listen to the context of this scripture that Jesus, this is Jesus. What man is there among you who, if his son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, will you give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Jesus says, now, which of you, if your son came up to you and said, Dad, would you give me some bread? You give him a stone instead? And Jesus said, none of you would do that. He said, if you're, if you're evil, if you're evil and you're good to your kids, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask? You understand, God is the best father in the universe. If you, if you had money, if you won the lottery, like that billion dollar lottery that was just won, people ask, is it a sin to play the lottery? No, not if you tithe. <laughs> if you don't tithe, you'll probably go to hell. Uh, but if you tithe, it's not a sin. So if you won the lottery and got all these millions of dollars, you know what you'd do? You'd bless your children, wouldn't you? You would. Your children would be blessed. It's one of the first things you would do. You know why? Because you love your children. What loving parent would not bless their children if they had the ability? Did you know that God owns the universe? He's rich beyond calculation. You know the second part of the good news there? He loves you. The way you love your children and want good things for your children, he loves you and he has an unlimited capacity to bless you. See. When God came to Abraham and said to Abraham, Abraham, this time next year, you're going to have a child. Abraham did not do this. Huh. That's going to be hard to pull off. Look, look at me and Sarah's worse. <laughs> That's not what he did. He looked at God. And he decided that God was able to pull it off. And it was imputed to him for righteousness. And right now, I'm bringing this word to you, and some of you, your minds are fighting because you're thinking, Jimmy, I, I, I can understand that for other people, but you just don't understand my circumstance. You don't understand what I've been through. You're right, I probably don't, but he does, and I'm telling you, he can do anything that he wants to do in your life if you'll put faith in him. Don't put faith in you. Don't put faith in you. Put faith in God. And you say, well, why would God want to bless me? So that the, first of all, he loves you. But secondly, so the kingdom of God can be financed. God doesn't give to churches. He gives to his people so that they can give to churches. Did you know that? See, the devil's dream is God's people are always broke so that the gospel can't go forward. And we can't reach communities and people. God's dream is his people would be blessed so every time there's a need, we can meet that need. And that's exactly what happens. You need to understand, there is a compelling interest that God has in blessing you. The other thing is this. Do you think people are gonna stand in line to be Christians if Christians are cursed? God, God wants to make the people around us jealous by looking at us. And they look at us and say, they're so happy. They're so blessed. You know? Those people over there, what, what is it about those people? And then they find out that we're Christians and they say, well, whatever it is, I want some of that. They're so happy, they're so blessed, they're, they're, they're happy in their marriage. That's what God wants. God wants to bless you so that you can be a, a, a light to people around you. And you can be a witness. And, and witness just means you can tell people what God's done for you. And so I want you, I want you to believe this today. I want you to believe that Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago died 
and justified you. Your record has been expunged. You have no record with God. He's madly in love with you and he's not mad anymore. He took all of his anger out on Jesus. And when Jesus was resurrected, it declared that we had been justified. And now we have peace with God. We have shalom peace with God means, which means all of the curse is gone and now every blessing of God is right before you. It's imputed to your account. It's withdrawn by faith. But in your heavenly bank account, you have every, every blessing of God is in your account and all you have to do is to believe in it and to withdraw it by faith, everything. And the blessing of Abraham, the bless, if you haven't done this before, I want to encourage you, change your bloodline, change your bloodline. And just right now or when you get home or something, all you have to do is just say, you know, Lord, I, bl I bless my family and I bless my relatives. But from this moment forward, I am no longer of my genetic bloodline. I'm of the bloodline of Abraham. Hey, this is Brent Evans with Exo Marriage, and I want to thank you for listening to the Marriage Today podcast. We believe your marriage has a 100% chance of success if you do it God's way. If you enjoyed today's teaching and want to keep learning, hey, subscribe to the Marriage Today podcast and take some time to leave us a review. Your reviews help us spread the word and can encourage someone else in need. For more great marriage content, check out exomarriage.com where you can see all of our marriage building resources, articles, and live events. The Marriage Day podcast is a part of a larger network of podcasts from XO Marriage. If you like this podcast, you will love the other podcasts on this network. These podcasts are a great way to get free marriage help delivered straight to your device every week. Visit xopodcast.com or search the XO Podcast Network on Apple Podcasts or Spotify.